Sky Code is a set of rules and regulations that form a code of conduct by which a man should live his life. Sky Code is an unspoken word that is spoken with the eyes. It's an unwritten guide imprinted on all men, a shared understanding that you need to know if you want to be a bro. These rules can be as simple as never sitting down with your legs crossed to tricky ones like never dating your friend's sister. In order for guy man not to dull, we need Sabi the code. Welcome to Guy Code Nigeria. On this episode of Guy Code, we'll be playing safe with sexual protection and STDs. The fact is, no condoms, no sex. Baby mamas, which are the results of playing without protection, and Nija moms. I'm intruding your privacy. When you're in my stomach for nine months, do you know anything about privacy? First, Let's start with the scariest decision a man has to make, giving her the keys. First of all, if two people are dating, before you can even open mouth and ask for a key, maybe like a year or two years, some girls will just start talking to you two weeks. Are you at home? No. Please drop the key for me. Excuse me, for what? <laughs> I think it'll be after um, six months. Um, after three months of like seeing each other every day in that house, yeah. Um, if you're not in the wife mode, I mean, why are we give you my key? It's just important to have the keys, you know, she just might want to surprise you and just say, oh honey, where are you? Are you going home from work? And then you just say, yeah, baby, I'm so tired, yeah, I'm about to get home. And then you're just like, you know what, I'm gonna surprise my sweetheart today. Like the keys to your own house, you need to have a spare with someone. Ladies need a key because we simply want to go through your when you're not home, we're gonna be going through your cupboards. What type of food do you like to eat? What type of toothpaste? We just wanna know because we feel like guys are really shady and they're always trying to hide something. Girls that actually ask for keys, I have trust issues. So you are feeding the insecurity if you're giving her, you know, your house keys. Because she could creep up on you at night. I think it's a title thing. You know, ladies, when they start talking, they want that confidentiality. Say, yes, I'm the one in charge. So when you, the moment you give them the key like this, I'm sure some of them, they will even FaceTime their friend when you give them the key. You just feel, ah, oh, I'm just, um, I went to Bankole's house. Am I, I'm, is he at home? You know, he's in Abuja, but I have the keys. I think I can't go. Ah, I think I have to go sit down. There's a million and one ways giving her the keys can backfire. Ah. <laughs> He's obviously keeping secrets from me. Like, how would I ask you, okay, baby, can I have the keys to your apartment? And you say, no. For what? She could barge in unexpected and, you know, things could go wrong. Things could go wrong. We have people who dump the stuff there. Got like two, three baby mamas. I live there with like five other guys. Maybe she walks in on me after after a night out and I'm hungover. That one is not even important. It's only I'm gonna lose your key. You give them key and it's only one key, they're not gonna lose it. I will enter the house. The tedious part about having a living girlfriend is setting boundaries so she does not complicate your very simple and carefree life. All right, call me on the phone now. Ah, ah, how you gonna call my house like that? You need to call me on the phone. You have to do a contract. If you give her a key, she cannot come to your house unexpected. She has to let you know. That's all he wants his space, because that happens as well. He just wants his space. But unannounced, first we'll go to a place and chill first. I mean, you gotta be coming for something different. You just can't pop in and say, you know, I just wanna hang out. Yeah, you gotta be the wife to do that. His house is, is space. Your house is your space. But if you come around from time to time, uh, well, you can know maybe where the key is kept. I should just be saying, where are you? Hmm. Your car is outside. Enter. Eh? You know? And you can't be lying. You have the key and your car is out. How did you say, oh, baby, I'm out? Out, where did you go? You take bike. I mean, you have a car in front of your house. I think there's, there's um, you know, a lot of ways you can, you know, you can use to show her, like, you love her, but, ah. But that one is difficult because when you tell her you, just, you love me and you can't give me your key, are you serious? And you know when they just break down, when they cry on your neck. <laughs> um, uh, my landlady is not like calm. I never built my own house. So since I'm still living under someone's roof, I'm still living with a landlady or a landlord. They know they like that kind of thing. Maybe they know we'll call you thief. Coming up next on Guy Code, sexual protection and STDs. Guys, it's important to stay protected and safe while having all the fun. Sexual protection to me, I think, you know, preventive measures um, not to get sexually transmitted diseases. 
uh, STDs, STIs are sexually transmitted infections and sexually transmitted diseases. So first of all, sexual protection is something that, you know, as adults, we should all practice unless you want to buy pampas. You know, unless you want to be seeing your doctor with it. Pampas is very expensive. Sexual protection first for me starts from the mind. It's not about you putting a condom uh, in your well, it's 2017, females, so you cannot just be sitting around waiting for the guy to be the one that's in charge of the protection. Like, oh yeah, but we, guy, you didn't tell me you didn't have a condom. Like, no, there are female condoms out there, ladies. I think every three months, you know, it's, it's something that you have to do every three months, you know, just see your doctor, be like, hey, I need to get myself checked out, do everything. To the visit doctor, especially in this Nigeria, get a CBO, you know, there are two things, first of all, it's the doctor, you know, you don't want him to tell you something you have that you didn't even know you had, you know. And then, it's the doctor, it costs a lot of money. So, we visit the doctor. I visit the doctor when, when the malaria come, they do that, I say, no, be malaria again. So, most guys is like, if they're not itching or, you know, they're not screaming in the bathroom when they're trying to pee, they really don't care. As a lady, I would not trust it. Like me, if I was like, I would get tested like every three months because they say, oh baby, you know you're the only one. I'm not cheating on you. I'm one of those guys. I just like to check it. I gotta be intact. It's like a meter. You have to make sure you are not above it. Well, I think it varies with women. I know some women who are paranoid. You know, every little thing, you know that. I just went to pee now, and I think I saw a speck. It could be the liner, panty liner. I'm like, I saw something. I'm going to the hospital, you know, so some women can be really, really paranoid about it. Guys, sometimes a diet won't be a bad option. You know, this is this is Africa, so I'm not <laughs> I'm not too sure asking, saying should there be limits on sexual partners, especially in this part of the continent. It's according to discretion. Where's that question for me still? How many girls you should have? Well, you know. I think I can ask that question later. Eh? Huh? What do you say, sir? But if you're single and still, you know, willing to mingle, you know, hey, who am I to, to stop your fun? It's a guy's social responsibility to spread the word and create awareness. For it, and you gotta talk about it too. I mean, it's good that you guys are always sitting down, guys, and it's a cold. Talk about it. You know, if you skin dive, speak about it. Or go do a checkup. Don't even go in there like you're swimming into bra. <laughs> you know the kind of shocks are in there. Guys don't even tell you when they're traveling overseas. You know, you just wake up one day, yo, where, where you did this guy? On my day, Jando. Uh-uh. You know, <laughs> when did you travel? I don't really plan on like that. You know, I just, I just walk out. So how they gonna tell you what's going on inside? Well, most times with girls, uh, they tell their closest friend or sister, Listen, this is what I'm seeing, or do you know anything about it? Condoms reduce pleasure during sex. No, I don't think so. I got the power. Well, the feelings literally are the same. I mean, come on, they, they've got extra sensitive. How much more extra do they need to get? But delegate is better safe than sorry. So I think Pleasure shouldn't just be your priority. Shouldn't just be your priority. Please get out of here. Get Talking about condoms, it is good for you. Stick to condoms and it doesn't even change anything. But you go, you know, as long as you know your John Paul is on the check, it will do the right job. So please, baby, just slap it on. If you don't want to, I will. It might be, it might not be as pleasurable as you would love it to be, but it would save us a whole lot of money, a whole lot of stress. I know she's fine. I know it feels different and everything, but always use a condom. You gotta go, girl. I mean, you gotta like what I like. I mean, I love what you love. I mean, but the fact is, no condoms, no sex. I personally would take it as an insult. If I'm in a relationship with you and you want to use a condom, then what? You saying you don't trust me? You saying you don't know what I got? Like, have I been snooping around and having sex with other people? Like, I think that could be insulting. The worst that can happen is having a baby for somebody that's supposed to be a one night stand or something. But if the baby really loves you, when she actually loves you so much, and I'm like, babe, man, let me start using condom more. And she's like, why? She's like, no. I think the fear of pampas or the fear of babies is the beginning of wisdom. So if you talk to her like, I have to start using condom because, you know, I can get you pregnant. 
Or you go and forge your own documents that the doctor said that, you know, your sperm is very strong. If you give her like this, eight kids at once. All right, all right. We get the point. Still to come on Guy Code, Baby Mamas and Niger Moms. Pro tip. How to keep your side chick a secret. If you're one of those guys, like myself, don't keep side chicks. Be truthful to your woman. But if the situation is crazier than your situation, the major rule is make sure the side chick knows about madame, and madame never knows about the side chick. Guy code. Pro tip how to step up to a girl at the gym. Now, there are so many ways you can walk around this. You don't want to be like the rest of the guys that just come. Oh, girl. I see. No, no, no. Ladies don't normally carry heavy weights. You know, so they just go for the treadmill, the ab rollers. They're probably doing sit ups or they have very light dumbbells, you know. So if you just try to, you know, if they're not doing it correctly, just try to adjust their form. Not necessarily go and say, okay, please put your. Oh, like this, no, no, no. You just go and show them the movement, ask about their routine, how you can help. Just chip in one or two things there. And with my own style, I would just, I always like to leave some kind of cliffhanger, you know, just leave it there, maybe just do something, something. That's the guy called. Welcome back to Guy Code Nigeria, your handbook on how to be a proper Niger guy. Once upon a time, there was a guy and there was a chick. Uh, they had sex without protection and they made a baby. He's not her husband and she is his baby mama. Baby mamas are, I mean, in the way we see it now, uh, people want to have babies for popular people, but that's not the right context. A baby mama is a lady who has a kid, oftentimes for a person in a celebrity position, and who have a mutual agreement to co-parent that kid without the necessary pressures of a committed relationship. They are in 57, they are light-skinned, they have like 10,000 followers on Instagram. Uh, a baby mama is a girl that got pregnant with a dude that she's no longer dating. But to Emil, every mother on the surface of the earth is a baby mama. If you switch, it's make it pigeon mama baby. Do you understand? So uh, in recent times, the slang, the lingua, the lingo that they call it is basically a woman who had a child out of wedlock. Yeah. <laughs> you made it too now? Bruh, put a ring on that finger. Did you swear for this guy? So like you went to drop off baby food and you're like, oh, okay. I think I will tap that again without the condom. But I actually have a friend that falls victim to this all the time. She has two kids by this dude. That's her baby father. They are not together, but they like, they like rabbits. Like they always go at it. And the reason for it is because it's, it's like a comfort zone. To me, that is not cool. That is not cool. If you are no longer in a relationship. It doesn't make any sense. I know that some baby daddies in quotes kind of blackmail those women into sleeping with them. That is wrong. Ladies, don't, don't subject yourself to all of that. If my family likes my baby mama, but I like her enough to have a kid with her, but not enough to have a committed relationship, it is what it is, you know? Um, it's my life. It's my life. My life. It's my life. Well, um, do you like her? It's an added advantage for you to like the girl, you know, she's a baby mama, but it's an added advantage. I mean, she's doing well. I mean, she's playing up with everybody. That's a, that's a smart one. So you are not loved by your parents for you doing that first. And the second thing is you're not loved because you didn't keep the girl. It's a lot of problems for you, bro. <laughs> Too bad for my family, man. You know, that's like, that's like, that's, that, that, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, because you not become the bad guy. But I've come to understand that a lot of people have gotten into relationships <clears throat> due to reasons like this and got into a lot of trouble. Okay, if she tries to use the kid against me, um, I don't know what I'll do in that regard. I don't know. Don't think it. Bring the list and we slash and slash and slash 
and make sure the baby is good. If I extend it to you, good. The ideal situation is for her to stay far away from you as much as possible. Maybe the fact is you're not just mad enough to be the daddy. Or you're not ready, but you're ready to make babies. If you're ready to make babies, you gotta stick to the fact that you have to be a dad. I'm only teaching you how to do it. Go to YouTube Kids, there's a lot of little boys you can sing to them, you know, just come in, pop in and sing to them. Enjoy, be there at the graduation, and pay the money as well. It's good to put the baby mama on a stipend, you know, so she gets to be structurally responsible for herself. So I'd work out a situation, maybe she could make like 200. It's not only about you guys, think about the baby. But be there, let that child even know that, yes, I have a father figure in my life, so that is really important. These women can and will go overboard with everything. Oh, and we love them, Niger moms. Hi, mom. First of all, a Nigerian mother is somebody that does not take nonsense. That's their, that's their signature, no nonsense. And the kind of slap that they can use to reset your whole life, when they slap you like this, they can't, they can't even give. Your head could be low. In St. Niger, I'm basically anointing oil, foam pouch, uh, two wrapper. They are very passionate about their kids, if you know what I mean. <laughs> if you make a mistake, it's going down. <laughs> A woman that doesn't just say how you feel, man. You have to do it her way. Nigerian moms are powerful people, big heart. They love their kids as much as they love everything about themselves. I mean, I need to get emotional right now. I mean, if you got handkerchiefs, you can bring it to buckets. I don't want to cry right now. Every Nigerian mom out there, you're doing a good job. When a Nigerian mom does this, it means get out of there. Get out. Or when she does this, Know that Timati Dili, let me translate that. When we get home, you're dead. Uh, the problem is that, you know, they always have a straight face. So one face could just make a bunch of stuff. Ah, uh, come here, come on, just take money for cabin biscuits. And you now be confused. Ah, should I collect this money? Should I not collect this money? Well, you don't collect the money. You do not collect money. But when you not collect the money, you not get to. Toby, how much did your uncle give you? Two hundred, love friend. Give me the money. Come here, submit it. Then when they shake their heads, uh, nah, <laughs> you are done, bro. <laughs> just start, just pack and move into your neighbor's house. You didn't know what, what do you mean? All these guys that they'll be pressing phones. All these guys that be snapchatting in the club. These are them to dance with boys. They'll be snapchatting. They're doing like this. They don't have the qualities. Even all these guys, the way they press phone, their hand is not hard. So when they slap somebody, nothing can happen. The truth is, you know, things are changing. I mean, it's not like we like the change, but things are changing everywhere. Food. Relationships, the girls are getting crazy these days. Yeah. There are some things that you can relate to, but some others you can't because of their uniqueness. Parties and events, those days. So first of all, my mom doesn't like taking her children to parties. You know, as an African mother, they'll take you to parties, they're going to show you off. My mom doesn't like taking children to parties. So those days, she believed that when you're not hungry, you can, you, they, somebody will invite you to a party, you not take your whole family. See if you are super egos. What kind of nonsense is that? Can I even go? I think I went to more fellowships than parties. But something that my mom does, I used to pay me then, is that when my mom is going for a party, she's going to promise us that don't worry, I don't, don't worry. Stay at home, don't worry. I'll bring jello fries for you. Then when she now come back home, she'll say the food is finished. Please, how did the food finish? Excuse me, is it your father that is doing a party? That you're asking for jello fries? Moms will always remind you that they gave birth to you and carry you for nine months. I mean, some of them have a mistake and they say 10 months. Some will tell you forever. They don't even keep tabs anymore. Because when they're angry, it gets higher. Come and drive me to the market. No, I can't. I'm tired. I carried you for nine months. What if I said I was tired? And I, I bought it. And I'm like, really? I'll just close my door. I'm going to just come kick the door. Back. Well, you're passing yourself, Abby. You're passing yourself. Let me see your hand. I'm intruding your privacy. When you're in my stomach for nine months, do you know anything about privacy? When it comes to Niger moms, not everything is as it's said. Here are some Niger mom codes that you don't want to misinterpret. I mean, what she says, I'm not angry. She's angry. So that I'm not angry is a cue for you to let you know that she's angry. I wonder why people gawk this every time. But when they tell you, you see that, no. If you pass, you pass for yourself. If you don't pass, don't pass. When, you, when I do like this to your story, it means you are dead. When I do like this, if you pass, or she say, what's my own? When you come home late. Toby, where are you coming from? Hey, mom, I went to What's my own? I got to sleep. 4 a.m. in the morning. I mean, you, you got to do well in school first. 
Uh, they're always very happy and said, oh, hi. Dotsuni, yeah. Dotsuni, oh, what did Dagwa go and see you? A fine boy in you. I was like, what did you have had me? Remember that when you bring your friend, first of all, your mom will gauge your friend from what they are studying in school. Uncle, what I studied in school? Music. You, you cannot be successful. You, what I studied in school? Biology. Uh -uh. Biology? Really? <laughs> What's the name of your dad? When you now come to the house, I see you are doing comedy. Toby! Someone is here for you. What's your name again? John, you are a comedian. Do you even know book? John, do you have parents? Your mother is alive? Your father is alive? And they allow you to do comedy? You, you, okay? Toby, you can go. You have five minutes. What have five minutes like this? Toby, your time is up. Go in your bedroom and carry your book. Mr. Comedian, nothing is funny. You can go home. Thank you for coming. But when you come, are you a doctor? Uh -uh. Toby? Come here, your friend has been wasting his money. Your friend is a doctor. If your friend is wasting time as you're wasting time, do you think, do you think he, he can become a doctor? Come here, man, your friend is waiting for you, Joe. Nonsense. Well, she has to dress properly first. No tight jeans, you know, no anklets. The heels might not be too high before they think you're a prostitute or something. Uh, no expensive hair because they might be looking at you like, oh yeah, you're spending their son's money and stuff. He never introduced me and I thank him for it. Thank you. So when we broke up, I didn't have to explain anything to anybody. Toby, where's your girlfriend? I'm mommy, she's fine. Oh, she's fine. So you have one. You are crazy. That's, you see, that's why you don't know book. Like, I'm a Timothy Pine song, Pine, yeah, Timothy Pine, Lori Fun, Timothy Song P. I mean, she's the one. I think days. You gotta act like, you know, you guys are not sorry having sex. Unless you are getting to like 30 something, then they send out be like, where's your girl? Ah, are you this ugly? You can't find a woman. He's like, goodness, they can't keep telling me, hey, when will I get married? Mom, you get married. Well, this was single ladies. Like, I like I could be like, Mom, what do you want for breakfast? I want you to have husband. I'm like, be quick and remove the shame from the family. But I'm like, I didn't steal though. I'm just not married. Especially if you yourself, that you are the boyfriend, you are not doing well at home. You can just come. Good afternoon, Mom. My name is Shadi. Shadi, who are you? I'm so busy. Hey! Oh, Jamilara, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Toby! You have girlfriend? Girlfriend? What do you do? I'm a makeup man. Hey, Jesus, makeup artisan. Oh my God, this boy have kid me. Move out of here, please. Before I call the security on you. You can definitely tell a Nigerian mother does not like you if you walk into her house and you say, ah, good afternoon, man. Mm. She doesn't like you at all. Or if she doesn't offer you food, or maybe she even offers you food, but she doesn't put meat on top of it. No meat, no fish, no nothing. She does not like you. Your bad moms will eye you. They'll give you eye. <laughs> on Guy Code today, we uncover the following codes. First of all, if two people are dating, before you can even open mouth and ask for a key, maybe like a year or two years, some girls will just start talking to you two weeks. Are you at home? No. Please drop the key for me. Excuse me, for what? He's obviously keeping secrets from me. Like, how would I ask you? Okay, baby, can I have the keys to your apartment? And you say, no, for what? He's got like two, three baby mamas. I live there with like five other guys. Sexual protection, first for me, starts from the mind. So most guys is like, if they're not itching or, you know, they're not screaming in the bathroom when they're trying to take a pee, they really don't care. It's good to put the baby mama on a stipend, you know, so she gets to be structurally responsible for herself. So I'd work out a situation, maybe she could make like 200. And the pro tips to help you through till we come next week to uncover more codes. Join us next week for another episode of Guy Code. Powered by Gulda.